Okay, today we're working on watermelons. This is one that I did previously, which is a full one. This time around, I'm aiming to go for a bitten off version of the watermelon. So I'm going to come in with a size 10 brush. I'm going to gently curve the bottom of the watermelon and then work my way up with the water. And if you've got a light on, you'll see the glare of the, the water and the, the gloss on your paper and just do a little bit of a jagged top to it so you've basically got a triangle that you're filling in and taking off the top end of where the watermelon has been bitten off now once you've done that you can start popping in your pinks and dispersing them in the wet of your paper and just come in gently and let the watercolor mingle and dance on the paper accordingly So you're bringing in lighter and darker pinks and that top area is jagged where it's been bitten off. Bring in more water and some yellow now. Yellow and pink make a really nice coral colour. I'm going to dab that off and then move around some of that mixed coral colour, pink and yellow together, and let that disperse on the paper. bringing in more water and more color as I go and then the hair dryer is used and as you're using the hair dryer to dry off all that water it creates some nice textures and lines which is great and then just coming in with the brush and a little bit more color up the top to define where the watermelon has been bitten and dropping in some more pinks a little bit stronger this time around and it's creating another layer and then I'm using the brush to just swoop down and give me an ever so light pink color and making that sort of see-through watermelon paper towel to blot out and it's given me an area where I know it's going to finish and then I'm coming in with the bottom half of the watermelon, size 10 brush still, clean water, and then I'm going to disperse in some lemon yellow, any yellow of choice that you have, and just tinge the paper up and towards the watermelon flesh. I'm trying to keep that bottom end triangular as such. dab out the bits that are a little bit too bright and then come in with a little bit more water and then come in with a really nice light green just play around with that in the corners and spread it across and again you're allowing the watercolor to move across the wet paper and then a darker green as a line using your 10 in a point and then bring in some water which will push that dark green down and that's where you want it to create that line and I'm coming in now with the 00 liner and I'm gently coming in with some sepia to where I want the pips of the watermelon to be so these are just shadows that I'm creating with the sepia now I like that area there so I'm going to choose somewhere else to put this little pip I'm just oval shaped and I don't mind that they're bleeding into the paper and now I'm coming in a little bit darker with the sepia so that pip up the top is a little bit inside the watermelon still and a little bit of it's poking out now I'm dabbing it so that I can come in a little bit more intense and it won't bleed into the paper and I'm keeping some highlights for the pips and just coming in with the darker areas
a little bit more pink because the center of the watermelon does have some darker areas so I'm coming in with some more pink and a little bit of purple and just working out where I want to put and disperse those and I want to go a little bit darker around that pip area and disperse a little bit of a more intense pink into my watermelon and I definitely want that shadow of the watermelon so a stronger pink underneath that pip I'm just playing around and, and seeing what's happening with the patterns that the watercolor is creating on its own and I'm just letting the watercolor move into the wet paper and create the patterns again a few dots of purple in there to give the illusion and then dropping some bigger bits of water in there to let that all disperse out and look quite natural you don't want any harsh lines so always come back and push in some more water and now here I don't like all this white space so I'm just taking my brush and dispersing the pink all the way through but still leaving a little bit of the white so it looks almost wet now which is a cool look and that pink has come in and it's it's bled through into the green and I don't mind that at all and then I'm coming in with some indigo blue which will help darken the sepia without using black and then just moving that excess water across and bringing in some green and I'm using some paper towel that I've scrunched up and made it into a point and I'm taking off some of that excess water which is actually going to allow me to highlight my watermelon skin and then just coming in a little bit stronger with the green a little bit more pink and then I'm going to come in with a tiny little bit of indigo and let that really highlight the white areas that I've lifted off with the paper towel and just move that indigo through use the paper towel to dab out any bits that you're not happy with and I'm just bringing in a little bit of green and then dispersing that with my paintbrush I'm not looking for perfection in this painting it's a loose watermelon painting and then just moving that green through again and as you can see because we've put in the indigo it's highlighted that white beautifully coming very close to the end of the painting now just doing a few touch-ups here and there I'm just coming in with a little bit of bleed proof white and that's it watermelon <laughs>